This is the London Transport Museum, where we can learn all about the history of London's amazing transportation system, trains, buses, trams, the list goes on. It's a rainy day here in London, and what's a better thing to do than to geek out on trains by going inside the museum? Let's go. Behold, the London Transport Museum. As expected, is jam-packed with kids, and at first glance, I thought it was a train station, but it's actually a fruit, vegetable, and flower market that was built in 1871 by William Rogers and done in beautiful Victorian glass and steel style that you see all around. It was actually designed based on train stations of the era. It had to be a huge place where could people uh, put their stalls and also bring in lots of cargo. So that's how they can fit in all these gigantic buses, which we're gonna see soon. So let's walk around. The old cabs, these cabs were horse-drawn cabs or called omnibuses. And this really started the bus system here in London. Also the same case in other cities like New York as well. For example, this one from Paddington to the bank. Here you have a gentleman reading the newspaper. By 1859, you have a second floor right up there. <laughs> in order for, to provide some historical accuracy, they put some manure. Lots and lots of manure. Now people don't realize that today we complain about gas exhaust, which is a serious environmental issue. But there was a different kind of environmental issue back before the era of gas or electric vehicles. That was tons and tons and tons and tons of manure. The streets were buried in manure because there were hundreds of thousands of horses. Another double-decker bus here. And this one is a little bit more elaborate seating. Has actual proper benches up there. These are so cool to see life-sized. This one actually was a tram. So here, tram, I wonder if it was, yeah, it's on tracks. So omnibuses were, you can go anywhere, but these were on tracks. Let's take a look inside. Let's go downstairs. Oh, now I'm excited. Trains. Oh, yes. So the technique they did at first to build the very first underground was called cut and cover. Here, they would actually blow up and dynamite the street and dig a big hole. And in that big hole, they would put the tube, the very first type of tunnels. The reason they called them the tube is because they looked like a huge tube. It was very circular. And there would be the trains, and then they would cover it up again. So cut and cover. Very efficient way, actually. Here we have a little video depicting it. Now, this would be highly disruptive to business on any given high street or main street. However, it is very cheap to do. And once you build it, it doesn't cause that much disruption. Nowadays, cut and cover has a bad reputation. So we no longer do it in most cities around the world. But maybe we should reconsider it. The cool thing about cut and cover also is that the tunnels could be fairly big and spacious and you didn't need to walk too much down. So here we see only about two flights of stairs to get down to the station. And here we have the circle line that was completed in 1863, well, at least started in 1863 and then finished completion in 1884. Now I'm super excited for this. This was the steam trains that ran underground. For context, uh, the steam that comes out, these gigantic pipes, these exhausts, wasn't clean, it wasn't water vapor. It was filled with soot every single day while commuting and you'll be stuck underground. That was not a very good combination at all. <laughs> You um, probably came home co covered in soot. It might not be visible, but after a while, that's why you start seeing the collection of soot. And also considering that people probably did not bathe every single day necessarily, depending on your social status. Yeah, trans uh, commuting back then was a yeah, double-edged sword. Sure, it was faster than horses. I think uh, today we take our modern transportation system for granted. But it's cool that we can actually touch a real train. That's awesome. Now I love trains, mostly because I love cities. Obviously that's the name of the show, Urbanist. But beyond that, 
It's because of trains that I can transport myself around the city. And here in London, there's also the beautiful bus system, which is a great combination. Here we have the train cars, and we'll see if we can go in. So here's the train car. And I love the designs on the actual, the actual cushioning. The London Underground to this day has a cool, interesting design, unlike New York, which is just plastic. This one's going to Abbey Road, interesting. Or, I mean, not going to Abbey Road, but that's advertisement. And here we have the train system. This is the Metropolitan Railway and Connections. And here we have the Inner Circle Railway. So we can go on Baker Street and all these other places. We can go Wembley Stadium and all these wonderful places. And here is a way to allow the this train car to ventilate. Okay, so this calls for a bench test. Bench tests are a very important aspect of this show. So one point off because I placed my bag and this seat is designed in a way that there's a slope so the bag just fell down and hopefully nothing broke. All right. I don't like the downward slope of the actual seat. Uh, makes you feel like you're sliding down. That's one point off. But it is comfy. It has nice cushioning. I like the design of the cushion. Uh, it is kind of homey, but I, I cannot imagine being squeezed over here with a lot of people. That would be a not so good combination. So I would give this bench the seat. Mmm, it smells good. Mm, I love the old wood smell. It's crowded, it's cramped, comfy, but also I'm sliding down. And also I'm probably touching the knees of other people if I were here filled with uh, other passengers. This ends up getting a 5.2 out of 10. Okay, so here we have a really cool thing called Metroland. So trains, similar to what ended up happening with cars later in the 1950s, trains end up extending the city. So no longer do you have to live in the crowd, cramped central London that was filled with soot and grime and crime. No, now you can move over to Metroland. <laughs> Metroland was a book, it was, it was like a brochure showing you all the beautiful houses you can live in in the first London suburbs or the garden cities of London. It says, obtain this book, 128 pages of picture and story. And here we have the different Metroland uh, homes that you can get. Metroland is still a real neighborhood. These houses still exist. Here we have a Type A house. You got a Type C house, which is a little bit kind of taller. And it was a mere 895 pounds. That is a good price. I wish homes were that affordable nowadays. And here we have a lot more, a lot more homes. So here we have the trains that extended off into Metroland, which was the suburbs. That's really cool. I love these old posters. Ooh, where can I find one? I hope there's one in the gift shop. Look at this gorgeous London's tramways. Fortunately, London doesn't have that many trams anymore. A few of the suburbs or the towns do, but not in all around the city like it used to. Oh, look, there's even a London transport map that shows you all the cinemas you can visit. This one's very nice. Wow. Can't really walk in here, Bo. Peek in, right here. Going forward into the 1960s and 70s. Here at the London Transport, the railroad. 
passenger railroad, commuter trains. As I mentioned, the steam trains would pass right in the middle of the city, underground and above ground, so a lot of soot. And that's why you see a lot of the buildings, they kind of have a grime on them. It's all that collection of all that exhaust. No wonder people after a long day of working would be, as the Londoners say, knackered. Oh, I'm so excited. This is an awesome museum. I recommend it. I end up coming here using the London Pass. So I end up using the London Pass. It's, um, it's like 20 something pounds to come in, but the London Pass, especially if you get it two days or one day, very well worth it. Hammersmith, and we got a bench. Let's try, second bench test. Okay, let's try this out, the second bench. This is, uh, appears to be one of the benches on the commuter trains on the station. Probably a little bit less than 100 years ago. I like it. The, the wood is actually done in the well in a way that has a nice little bend to it, which is very nice for my buttocks uh, to feel very good. And, but the thing is, the back is way too straight. I have to have very good posture, very proper posture. You know, like most, most English, it's always nice proper posture. I can't be like all New York style. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Overall, points for the bend, but minus points for the straightness of the back. Also, this is a huge sign, this kind of a nuisance. So I would give this a... I would give this, this is pretty low actually. This, this would get it's like a 5.1. Here's a 1938 tube stock car. And we're gonna see the buses soon, the double deckers. So the term for different train cars that are used in any given system is called rolling stock. So this is the rolling stock from back then. And this one looks nice. Ooh, I'm excited for this. Oh, wow, this is spacious. Has that kind of tube shape to it. Oh, very spacious. Look at these seats. Oh, these are nice. Good cushion. Love the design, red and black with a little bit of green. Nice wood finishing, warm lighting. Oh, kind of romantic. In a, like a Dickensian way. Cool display, oh, I like that. This museum is really well designed. Here we have the iconic double-decker London buses. What, they used to be other colors? Here we have a golden and purple one. Oh, this is cool. Now you can still ride one of these buses to this day. There's one line that maintains these old buses, which I might record in a different video. But let's uh, let's hop on, shall we? Let's go. I got my Oyster card ready. But back then, no Oyster cards were used. So they used to check tickets here, it seems, like there was a conductor or a ticket collector. No way to pay the fare in the front, so you would come here in the no, back. Don't jump anywhere. Let me go here. Let's go up here. So this is the second floor. These double-deckers are so cool. I wish New York would adopt, adopt a double-decker. Again, great seating, always with pads. You can't have this in New York, unfortunately, because of bed bugs. It kind of sucks. We have the London Black Cab. This is the iconic taxi. Here they call them cabs. New York, they're yellow. Mexico City, they're pink. And here they're black. Well, not always, but most of the time, they're black. And this one's an older model. 
still super spacious and possibly pretty accessible. Nowadays, they're very accessible, but this seems like accessibility was still okay. It's better than most cars. Here are the modern, modern buses over here. 1939 to 1979, this ran. 1979 was the last that this ever ran. It seems like you used to be able to sit in them, um, but no longer because of the pandemic restrictions, unfortunately. But it seems like, hopefully, maybe in the future, you come back, you'll be able to actually sit in all these buses and take selfies. But luckily, I have long arms. Now, I would feel scared riding a double-decker bus through a crowded London on the second level. Let me know, would you, would you do it? Would you ride the second level <laughs> on a crowded London bus? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what, like, without a top? I would do it in the normal buses that are covered, but these ones. That sounds like a, quite an adventure. All right, let's go over here to these other buses. Wow, this is such a great interactive exhibition. You really do get to see all of London history. So these were electric trams that ran in 1910. Let's we'll see if we can get inside. There are quite a bit of people. Oh, she okay? Uh oh. Okay. It's hazardous. Oh, interesting. These were designed different. I love this. I don't see any sign saying the contrary, so let me see if I can turn it. No, I can't. And these t steps are tiny. Look at that. No worries. <laughs> These steps are so tiny. Okay, fair warning, if you're a very tall person, uh, a very tall 5'2", uh, do watch out. There's a lot of little kids here. You don't want to punt one of the little kids. Like if you're trying to score a goal in soccer against Manchester United, you don't want to do it. So do, rather than mind the gap, mind your step. What's this guy doing? He has a gigantic pole up there to the tram lines. The best buses in the world, it says. Made in West London. The London General Omnibus Company led to the dramatic development of the bus during the 1920s. Buses were overhauled at the gigantic Shizik Works, which opened up in 1921. The main London bus builder was the Associated Equipment Company, the ACE, in Southall, West London in 1927. Working together, Shizik and Southall developed the most advanced buses in the world. 
when the London Transport took over in 1933 and inherited a fleet of nearly 6,000 buses. Wow. Okay, I might be biased, but I do think they're the best buses in the world. Not because I'm a Londoner, I'm not a Londoner, but I'm a New Yorker, and New York buses suck. So, in my opinion, uh, they're loud, they're noisy, uh, they're plastic seating, it's so unfriendly and cold. Uh, so, I don't like them too much. Let me know what you think. Is it truly the best buses in the world? Maybe, maybe there's another city out there that has even cooler buses. So drivers used to have to wear very proper attire. I like the jackets that they had. Nice double-breasted jacket. Really formal. Shirt and tie. They had a little emblem over here. Some accoutrements. And they had to have their face shaven. This is a bus from 1913. And this one looks cool. This one looks like a military vehicle. And there we go. We have seen the museum portion, uh, which is really awesome. I really enjoyed coming over here. It was such a blast. There's also an awesome gift shop and there's a cafe, which I'm very curious if they have any kind of transit themed treats. All right, let's check it out and let's go. This way, right into the shop. A lot of toys and model trains. Oh, I love that. There's even a modeled black taxi cab. I know I have a few viewers that collect these types of uh, toy vehicles. Really, really cool. Oh, postcards. Okay. Mega Urbanist. Stay tuned. There will be postcards featuring the London Underground. If you want to receive postcards on a monthly basis, from parts abroad, including London this month. You can become a mega urbanist. It's a $20 a month or more contribution via patreon.com slash urbanist, or on YouTube, press that join button, and you'll become a part of the postcard club. And this is, I think, the coolest thing. We have pillows that represent the different tube seating. This one is the one I see the most in central London. Wow. I kind of want, to, I kind of want one of those, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think it'll fit in my bag. Oh my God, you can even have a overground. This is the overground, which is a commuter train that connects all the suburbs together around central London. And you can have it as a lollipop. And of course, you can have a Paddington bear. I wonder if Paddington has a tube specific journey that he's gone. And the poster is exactly what I wanted. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, and they're pretty inexpensive. You can get three for 20 pounds, which is a okay price for a nice print. <laughs> you could dress as the seats of London. Oh, that's amazing. This is one of the reasons I think the London Underground has so much more fervor in its uh, fans than fans of the New York transit system. Uh, the overground has the, the underground and the tube and the entire London transport system has such a varied history different companies, different seats, different trains, different rolling stock. The list goes on, and I think that's what gets people really kind of curious about learning the transit network. So I'll bid you adieu. I think I'm going to get myself a few souvenirs. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. Slam that like button if you enjoyed these videos. Uh, and leave a comment and let me know uh, what's your favorite train system in the world. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Keep being awesome and always keep on this board. Cheerio!